y'all. Check this out, man. How y'all doing out there in the world today? Man, today I got my boy with me, man. My friend. My comrade. My Flatbush neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Today we got Lord Digger in the building. What's up, Digger? What up, broski? Oh, shit, man. You already know what it is. Man, what's up, man? <laughs> It's been it's been a while. It's, I'm just about we've to say trying, been a minute. We've been, been trying to get this shit together. We've been, been fucking crossing paths. Okay. Let the people know. Let the people know. Cause a lot of people like it was it wasn't on you. Okay. It was a lot was on me too. Mm. So we finally got together. I'm here. There's no need to even. I mean, it is a need to talk. We are gonna talk, okay. but it's, say less. We ain't gotta say no more. All right. What happened? What happened? We here now, bro. All right. Fuck it, man. Shit. Let's, let's, get, let's get straight to the gusto. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, mm -hmm. this is we all flappish. Yes, sir. Circa 19 Double X Podcast. We I'm, are Flatbush, nigga. All right. I, I'm a part of this. I'm a part of the culture, the Flatbush, everything. You understand? Mm -hmm. We are what we say we are. That's so fact. that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Just because I'm this fucking boy and all this other shit, if I didn't have something to talk about and have a story to tell, mm -hmm. I would not be sitting here. You mm -hmm. just pass me on Flatbush in a junction, we'll slap it up. I'll give him some butter or whatever, and we keep it moving. <laughs> but other than that, and we smoking on a good butter right exactly. about now. We smoking on some good. I don't even know the name of this shit, but it got me high already. I'm on my that's street, that's some straight L train. That right there is um, what the fuck I gave you? I don't even know. Yeah, it's some, something, but it got, uh, me, it got me high on my fourth pull. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. This shit is fresh. It's it's fresh. And it's fresh. And it's fresh. Straight from Michigan, my nigga Mario L train. We working together. That's my fucking mm -hmm. fam and shit. But um. I think that was alien, that's alien crump. Give me alien crump. Shit, I'm you got a, alien crump. Right I'm here. in a space right now. Oh, um, shit. Well, yo, what, before before we get into all this weed stuff, you know what I mean. I'm mm -hmm. normal. We about to talk to my boy right here about all the weed. Cause you're a weed connoisseur. You know about all the weeds and all of that. But like I said, we, we on the we are flappish platform today, and we gonna start it off. We we gonna tippy toe through this shit right here. We ain't gonna skip over no no mm -hmm. no nothing. We gonna tippy toe through this shit. All details. All right. So boom. Where is Lord Digger from? Where, where did you start Origin, from? Originally, yes. I was born in Miami, Florida. Mm. So my moms had moved to New York, and I was living with my grandmother, so I was down there. So the music scene and all that shit early, you talking about, you talking about 70s, mid-70s, going into late 70s. So um, my mom's is up here. So what I used to do, I used to come up for the summer. Okay. In anticipation of staying, but <laughs> once I got up here and shit, I was like, yo, fuck this shit. It's like tall buildings and houses. I can't see shit around me. There's no grass. Niggas is playing in sandboxes. Because originally when I moved, I, I, um, when I first started, you know, thinking I was going to stay, my mom's lived in Brownsville. She lived okay. in, um, she lived on Lot Avenue. Shout out to Brownsville. She was on, she's a 70, I think it was a 73 Lot Avenue. Okay. So eventually she had got a, a, Approval to move into Riverdale Towers, which was on Riverdale Avenue between Osborne and Watkins Street. So I think it was like 76 or 75, she moved into Riverdale Towers. So I came up maybe like the tail end of 76. Like I said, I thought I was going to stay. So I actually enrolled in school. I was in school in Brownsville. Okay. PS 184. All right. And um, the funny shit was Tyson was enrolled in the same fucking school, but Mike Tyson never fucking came to school. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. So, like I said, we don't tip we, we don't skip over anything. We're not going to skip through, we're not going to skip none of this shit. So, you telling me... Mike man, Tyson was in the same fucking school. He never came to school. <laughs> PS184, I swear to fucking God, nigga never came to school. No, Mike, school. why you ain't go to school, man? Never came to school. If, if I'm lying, Mike will tell you right now. He PS184, never came to school. Okay. So, at that time... Um, you know, like I said, I thought I was going to stay and shit, but I was like, you know, I didn't really like the shit. You know, school, recess time in Florida and shit, we out playing in the grass, niggas playing football and shit, and I right. recess out here, we don't fucking concrete, niggas playing skelly. <laughs> we ain't got I'm grass like, out We ain't got no grass and shit. I'm, like, fuck, I'm in the back of a school, looking at a school. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? So I was like, yo, nah, mom, I want to go back. Grandma. So I went back to grandma for maybe like about two years. Then I came back, like maybe like not too long after my brother was born. My brother was born. Shout out to my brother, Shot Stimuli, okay. Flatbush. Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. So yes. after he was born, I came back for a little while. Um, I say about from like 81 to like, say about 80 to 81. Mm. Um, I was still at 184. Um, and then after that, I was like, yo, yo fuck that. I, I, I want to go back to grandma officially. He's like, all right, when you go back now, you're not coming back. 
Mm. You know, whatever, whatever. She said, all, you know, the whole shit to try to, like, entice me to stay. Like, okay. John make me scared. Like, if you leave this term, you're not coming back. Oh, so, so she gave you an ultimatum. Yeah, kind of like. So, okay. but I, I was like, yeah, fuck that. I want to go back to grandma. So I went back. I stayed there for maybe, like, until the tail in a middle part of, like, maybe, like, 82, I think. Okay. And then I made the trek back up to New York. Stayed. You know, Riverdale Towers, I think we stayed there till about middle part of like 83. Okay. Bam. We moved to Flatbush. Woo! You heard what he said. He came to Flatbush, 83. Now, this is where it starts. <laughs> this is where it starts. 83. We come to Flatbush and shit, so we buy a house, East 40th Street, Avenue D. The 40s. So I was like, yo, now I start to feel like. I start to feel like a home and shit. Like, you know, it was home and shit. That's mm-hmm. like living in a project. So, wait, so, so, so in a... what made you start feeling at home? Like you just said, I mean, you went back, you came up here, you went back, and now you really come it, up here. It, it made what me start made feeling you... at home because it was like, you know, even though I had my own room and we was in the PJs and shit, but I had, you know, it was a house and shit. So, you know, you got the free reign. You know, like going in the elevator not thinking that the elevator don't get stuck. All this mm. shit in my mind, you know, I'm nigga from mm. down south, so okay. was, elevator gets stuck, niggas is doing stupid shit in the projects, <laughs> sticking the elevator, <laughs> niggas is climbing out between floors, playing all this cor- type of shit. Playing corners. You turn the corner, you know, mm. nigga trying to rock. One, one time I went to get a fucking newspaper and shit, I'm like, this nigga, I knew, I fucking hang out, his name was Ricky, never forget this shit. This nigga mm. pulled out the four or five on me, silver cor- I was like, yo, what the yeah, fuck is you, you doing? Wait, wait, wait. I was like about 11, my nigga, and I was like, Dang. I put my hands, I'm like, yo, the fuck is up with this nigga Ricky? But this is before I knew about niggas being on drugs. Mm. I didn't really know. I know niggas smoke weed. That nigga was on drugs. You weed is not a drug. Are we talking about 82, 83? Yeah, it's like, it's, like, it's like 80, it was like 80, 81. Okay. I bit the court. I was going to get a newspaper and shit. Right on Livonia. Right where they fucking filmed, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Brooklyn's Finest. Okay. okay. Right around that fucking mm. corner. I'm going to go get a newspaper and shit. I never forget this shit. So I'm walking around the corner. This nigga Ricky just... Like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, what the fuck? This nigga, Ricky, I know you and shit. Like, what the fuck is you doing? Like a little nigga. So this shorty kind of like saved my life. She was crazy. She comes out. Her name was Sean. Mm. She just looked at this nigga, Ricky, like, Ricky, what the fuck is you doing? So from then, I was already done with River. I was like, yo, fuck this shit. So okay, my so mom now, said, okay. we moving into a house. I knew nothing about Flatbush. All I know is when we came in the neighborhood, I'm like, I'm seeing houses. I ain't seen no fucking buildings and shit. Okay, okay. Not knowing Viz right off the block. Mm, we don't get into that. We don't get into that yet. yet. You ain't know yet. Hold on, I ain't know yet. So now I'm seeing houses and shit. So I'm like, all right. I'm starting to feel like I'm at home. I'm like, yo, this shit is all right. All right, cool. Got my own little backyard. Mm. Free reign. Go upstairs, downstairs. Got a little basement. You know, in Florida, we didn't, you know, houses down there, they really have basements and shit. Mm. Upstairs, it's just one level. But it'll probably be like three, four bedrooms. So that was some shit I was, you know, amazed by. Like, yeah, you go down the stairs and you go into another shit, into a basement. So I, all that shit was amazing. That's why I said I was feeling like I was at home. So now, you know, um, my mother started getting information about the neighborhood. Okay. So, you know, what she kind got of information, a, she what kind of information, information she about now the school. So people was telling like, oh, you don't want him to go to Tilden. <laughs> I went to Tilden. Shout out to Tilden High School. You know, you don't want him to go to Erasmus. Woo, E-Hall. <laughs> uh, Madison is okay. You don't want him to go to South Shore. Mm. <laughs> All of this shit, they tell her, filling her head up. All of this shit. So she found a way to call one of her friends. It was kind of like, you know, call, call her my aunt. All right. Because I knew her for a long time and shit. So basically she called her up and used her address mm. out of Sheepshead Bay. So uh, shout out to 14, 1406 Avenue Y. That's what got me in the sheep's head bay. Okay. So we used our address like I was living there and shit. So she got me in the sheep's head bay. So she was happy about that. Like, I got you in a halfway decent school. You're not going to be going with all of the fucking ruckus and all the bullshit. So. Why she call it a halfway decent school? Because she's figuring, you know, at that time we still had white people in it. Oh, yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to get the information out of you. The people want to hear this too. You know what I mean? So at the time, so she's figuring it's halfway decent because they got white people in it. Okay. Not knowing that the white people was doing more drugs than fucking black people. But that's besides the point. <laughs> that's besides the point. But yeah, she, you know, thinking that it's a better school because it had, you know, white kids in it. All right, cool. So I enroll in shit. I'm in there. I'm walking around. I'm looking around and shit. I'm like, yo, fuck. Like, 
this shit is kind of crazy and shit. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? It's a big ass school. Well, yeah, like, all I still was, was this. This is 83. This is the start of school, 83 September. Okay. So I'm like, um, as a matter of fact, let me back up. Wrong. I started school in Brownsville in the middle in the middle of 83, we moved to Flatbush. Okay. So it was All like right. in the second half of the year. Mm -hmm. So I started school in Brown. I started school in Brownsville because I remember now, let me go back. I used to take the 35 to the 44. So 35 running on um Hegeman down there. So I was taking that 35 to yeah, the truck 44 to get to fucking Chiefs at Bay. Mm -hmm. So um before that shit, you know, I joined the football team. All of that shit. Niggas like, yo, dude from Florida. Yo, you, you know, you play football. I'm like, football? You know, we grew up on that shit. So, right. boom, boom, football yeah, team. A lot, of, a lot of kids down south play uh, football. Fast forward, fast forward to now, boom. Right. Middle part of 83, we're, we're in Flatbush. Right. So, now, I'm rolling around, you know, new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. B8 bus right outside. Fucking less than fucking 100 Avenue feet. Bus. Avenue, Avenue D bus. bus. So, I'm like, all right, cool. I got to learn how to now go to school from here. So, I jump on the 8 bus. Get off on those gym, do my regular trek, see a bunch of kids, get me to go to Madison and all the other mm -hmm. schools and shit. So my first day in school, I'm there, I'm walking around, I'm like, yo, the shit is like, shit is amazing to me. Schools with three floors. Florida, we bad, we, I think we had two floors. Right, I'm about to say, yeah. Two floors, two like the floor. ground floor, and second floor. floor. So That's now it. three floors, I'm like, this is a fucking school. I'm like, this shit was amazing to me. Mm. So get in, you know, first year. I'm trying to make my way. It was a little bit easier for me because of the sports shit. Okay. You know, football okay. shit kind of helped me find my way by being on a team, you know, because they respected niggas that play sports, whether it was basketball, baseball, football, running track. So at the time, I was playing football and I was running track. So went through that little phase my first year, you know, in the Bay. I was learning my weight. I was a motherfucking receiver. So I, mm. I, all I did was just run past niggas and catch balls. So... They switched my position to quarterback. So I, my first year, I was trying to find my way. I didn't know whether when to run or pass. But, but, but why would why, but why would they do that? They because basically, basically, at that time, I think you know the coaches felt that I was one of the better athletes on the team. So okay. if you got a quarterback that can't throw it to me, similar to what two was going to be doing in Miami, trying to throw it to Tariq Hill, um, <laughs> you can't throw it to me. I'm out running everybody, and the ball is running short. Yeah. You can't throw it to me. So now he figured out a way. What, what I did, I fucked up. I threw the ball back to the coach. Like, the ball, he overthrew me, so I ran to the ball, and I picked it up, and I threw it back to the coach. Right. So now when I draw back to the coach, he stopped me. He said two things. He said, one, you run the ball back. Two, tomorrow you work out with the quarterbacks. Mm. So that's how it started. He was like, you, you're not going to be a receiver no more. You're going to be a quarterback. So just like, like that. Just like that. Okay. From one throw. I, I don't know. He must have saw something in it. I don't know. He was like, yo, you're going to work up with the quarterback. So he switched my position. So now I'm on JV doing my thing, still trying to find my way. So now next year, 84, boom. I'm the fucking starting quarterback, varsity. And Sheep said that. Sheep said that. Okay. Went through the whole summer, went through the shit. Still, I'm fucking nervous as fuck. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. Because like I said, I don't know whether now, I'm, I'm so used to just lining up with niggas snapping the ball and I'm running past niggas and they throwing it. I was confused. I'm like, should I run? Should I pass? They're telling me niggas is open. I'm tunnel vision. I'm like looking down the middle of the field. I'm not looking at nothing out here because I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, niggas is running at me. I'm like, I'm not used to this shit. So that first year, we wasn't really that good. But you saw the potential. Okay. Boom. Next year, 85. That's where it all changed. You know, I started paying more attention so mean, to so what so I was so doing. So mean, by, by 85, you was on... Um, JV, varsity. Not JV. I was, was on varsity. varsity we were up to varsity. So. And, uh, hold up, hold up. Not, 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 I'm not, I know you're going to get to that part of the story, but you joined varsity now. Mm -hmm. When you joined varsity now. This big shit. It, was there a particular person on that team that you ended up connecting a connection with? No, that was actually the year before. Mm -hmm. uh, the year before that, uh, Duval Clear better known as Master Ace, was on the Sheep's Head Bay varsity team. Okay, okay. So, you know, through that year, being that we won a team, we're kind of like, it's like a camaraderie. So, you know, the JV team, right. the varsity mm -hmm. team. So we kind of like, kind of like a unit. Because basically everything we're going to do on JV, we're going to do on varsity. So. Right, 
That's how y'all gonna graduate. Right, you know, exactly. You're gonna, to move up to the, you're gonna move up to the next and, level. So. And they watching y'all to see who the next right, who's gonna who, be the, who's next, the next little dude coming in. Yeah. Right. And I was right. one of them, I was one of them dudes. Okay. So actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Because actually I got to experience being a varsity player because some of the good players that was on JV, what Riley used to do is let us suit up on Saturdays mm -hmm. with the varsity team. So we would go, we wouldn't play, mm, okay, okay. but we would get a chance to be on the sideline and see them play and shit. So all the good players that he felt that was going to come up and, you know, well, be, make it. Right, going to make it to varsity them. next year. He was giving us that experience early and shit. So that's how I got to, you know, you know, hang around some of the older players, which was Ace and, um, you know, Aishi Rock, which was some of them that was on the team. Um, with, with me, which was, um, you know, Ice was on a, on a varsity team with me as well. Ice um, Rock was on the team too. Well, Ice Ice is part of Ice Rock. It's just it's Ice, is unique, who's you, and then there's Rock. Mm -hmm. So Ice was one part, which is Courtney McFadden. Shout out to Court. Um, he played uh, defensive back on that same team. Okay. But he was a, he was a year ahead of me. So you know we. Like I said, in 80, 84, I got a chance to work out with, it's like my mentor, shout out to my dude, Mike Walker. We did a lot of working out during that summer of 84 to get me ready for what was going to come in 85, which was me being a starting quarterback and shit. So a lot of people didn't know I did a lot of working out with him. We used to be in Marine Park, just thrown until my arm was dead. Okay. I remember one time my fucking arm, my shit felt like my shit was going to fall off. He's like, throw another uh, one. That people know who Michael Walker is. Yo, Mike Walker... He's a fucking genius. Um, he was the quarterback, you know, senior quarterback for Sheeps at Bay. You know, I got a chance to, you know, watch him and see a lot of stuff. And he later graduated and ended up going to Delaware State University. And at that time, which I didn't know, he was throwing, you know, passes to this particular receiver, which later I found out was um, John Taylor. And for those who don't know, John Taylor was – one of the better receivers in the late 80s and early 90s for the San Francisco 49ers. Mm. He won Super Bowls with them. So John Taylor played on this team at Delaware State University with Mike Walker. Okay. So Mike Walker used to come and shit, you know, during the summer when he come home, and he used to have game films and show me this dude. He was like, yo, man, this nigga, he wore, I think, I don't know what number he wore back then. I don't know. But this motherfucker, John Taylor, mm. He used to throw this motherfucker screen passes, bro. And this motherfucker used to break tackles. The same way he was doing it in the NFL, he was doing that shit in college. Niggas couldn't put hands on this nigga. That's some real shit. I don't watch football like that. Put bro. hands on this nigga. Couldn't even put That's hands on this nigga. I remember yeah. that name. Couldn't even put hands on this nigga. So now, when he's showing me this shit at his crib, and she said, babe, he's showing me this shit. And I'm like, this shit is amazing to me. Come to find out. What the significance of it in the 60 meters of separation is that the San Francisco 49ers is my fucking favorite team. team. Yeah, I know that. I'm so <laughs> when John Taylor goes to that fucking team, and I'm like, yo, my fucking mentor was just thrown to this nigga in college, and he gets drafted to the Niners, and that shit is amazing. That's big. That's big. That's fucking crazy. That's big. So that goes to show you that this nigga, the reason why some of this nigga's John Taylor stats, which really got him drafted to the Niners, comes from my man throwing it to him. Which was my fucking mentor. Shout out to Mike Walker, man. Yeah, let's get back to you. Yeah. Let's get back to you. I'm tell you what you were saying now. Um, um, in, in 84, mm -hmm. when you got to the varsity and you were Ace. Ace. Ace had graduated. He had graduated in 83, so he was gone. Okay. So 84, I was there with um, I was there with Ice from Ice You Rock. He used to play on the team with me for two years. He was a, he was a, um, he was a, I think he was a junior. I was a sophomore in 84. He was a junior, so he played with me for two years. So that year, 84, like I said, I really wasn't that good because I still was trying to figure it out. I was like, yo, man, this shit is fucking crazy. Like, throw the ball to niggas. I was nervous. I was like, I throw it too hard or too far. Yeah. I, I, I was throwing a lot of passes. I didn't really have a lot of touch back then, so a lot of shit was like bullet passes. It's like, and niggas would be dropping them shits. Like, it's just flying off their oh, fucking chest. chest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> niggas, like, yo, yeah, yeah, throw, throw that shit too hard. So I had to, you know, that was all 84, so that was all like a a, a, a trial period, you know, mm -hmm. like me learning the shit that I had to do. Like I said, I think we, I think we was like, I think we finished like five and five or some six or four and six in, or the, league, in, the, in league. the league. We just missed the playoffs 84. Mm -hmm. So now, like I said, the 80, 84 summer, you know, going into, now going to 85 or the 85 summer going into now the new school year, 
I worked out with Mike Walker. So I was pretty much, you know, learning what passes I should throw and what velocity I should put on what mm-hmm. passes, throwing to the sideline, post patterns, out patterns. We was working on everything during the summer. So that shit just got me really, really pumped to like for 85. So 85 season comes in. We all there, we running practice, we doing this shit, we doing what we gotta do. So the season starts out. First game of the fucking season, we play fucking poly prep. The year before that, poly prep knocked out two of our players. Broke my man's finger on the first play. Everybody was scared. Like this nigga was screaming. Mm. It's one of our best players. Shout out to Mike Walker. Mm. I mean on Mike Bennett. Um, he from Flatbush too. Um okay. he had broke his fucking finger on the first play, so all of us was fucking scared. It's like one of our best players, so he's out the game and we don't got him and we like so we lost to them in eighty four. So the next year, 85, we're looking for our revenge. So now we play these niggas. Poly Prep. Poly Prep is like one of the fucking bougiest fucking schools you go to. They fucking I heard they, the they, name. They, I heard they, the name. they they pay for their tuition and shit like right. that. They got the best grass field. Mm-hmm. They rich. They got like three, four uniforms. Mm-hmm. They look like the Dallas Cowboys, but in fucking in high school. Cool. <laughs> so, you know, we fucking go to play these niggas and they got all these uniforms and all this other shit. And they fans there with pom poms and the stands. I'm like, damn, we lost to these niggas last year. What the fuck, man? These niggas fucked us up. So we get out, just playing the game, and it seemed like the same shit's about to happen. So we down 6 nothing at the half. So we mm. going in the fucking half, and the coach is like, you gonna let these fucking rich kids beat you? And fucking da 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 He said some crazy shit, and he smacked the chalkboard, and the shit broke. Everybody was just like, oh, shit. My <laughs> coach Riley's like about five, four, or some shit like that. Irish nigga. So he smacks the chalkboard, and shit breaks. So niggas is like, Shit, he means business. Like, yo, we better step it up. Like, so mm. second half, we go out there. We was like, yo, we are not gonna let the rich white kids beat us. All right, we're not. This is not gonna happen. So second half, we go out, shut shit down. These niggas ain't score another point. We be, I think we beat them like eighteen to six or some shit mm. like that. Some dumb shit. But we was just scoring touchdowns all over them. We beat them. The year eighty five, we didn't lose a fucking game, pop. All right, all right. Undefeated, we ain't lose a. Fucking game. We was beating niggas. Niggas only scored. I don't know if niggas is in football or whatever. I was watching the shit. Y'all know what this is. Whole season, niggas scored 36 points on us. In 10 games. <laughs> 36 <laughs> points. So that's like 3.6 points a game if you average it out. Basically, I'm getting swept. Getting ass bust. Like getting body up. Getting like motherfucking. Fuck out of here. So we won the championship that year, undefeated. We beat Erasmus, not your school, but one of the one of school, but we beat up on Tilden too. As a matter of fact, <laughs> hold up, let me tell the Tilden story for a second. Okay, please, please tell me. Let's tell just tell the Tilden story. So we at Tilden High School, we playing, we undefeated. So you know how y'all feel is got this fucking like it's like a fortress, it's yeah, fucking it's a wall. <laughs> you in that motherfucker? It's like it's a big brick wall, big, wall big brick wall around the shit. So we like we trapped in. It's like a fucking fortress, bro. So we score. Tilton scores, but the refs call throw a flag, call the shit back. They make another big play, refs throw a flag, call mm-hmm. that shit back. So now you know niggas is tight. It's like, yo, that nigga's trying to get his game to the Sheepshead Bay niggas? Like, niggas, it's tight. So we score again. So one of the niggas on your team did some shit and got kicked out the game. Okay. So he's on the sidelines. He was supposed to leave. So a nigga from the sidelines said, yo, y'all niggas score again? It's on. Straight cheese. I don't know where it came from. My back was turned. We score. So I'm in the huddle. Like this, calling the fucking play. Going for the extra point. So out the corner of my eye, I see a nigga running off the sideline straight to my fucking, to my huddle. And he hits one of my niggas that got his head down. He can't see. He He had his head down like this. So he hits him full blast. Bow! When he does that, the whole, the the, 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 the niggas on the field, it's already 11 niggas on the field. The whole Tilden bench comes running right behind them. Full on fight, bro, on the field. What year was this? 1985. Whew. Full on brawl. Bro, we fighting. My mom's is at the game with my stepfather and my brother. Next thing I know, my mom's on the field pulling niggas off me. Wow. Talking about, yo, that's my son. There's a family up Look, there. I was looking up. I see my mother do my face mask. Yo, bro, I swear to God. I looked up. My mother's 
No, I think it's off. That's my son. Get off my son. Yo, yo, yo. This shit was hilarious, bro. Okay. Niggas had jokes for days, yo, nigga digger. Nigga Reg's moms was throwing niggas off the field. Jokes for days, yo, niggas Reg's moms throwing niggas off the field. And that was the truth. That was the, that was a true story. That's a true story. I want to true stories that she said that. I want to speed it up on you right now. Mm -hmm. I want to speed it up. We, we had a nice little of, of, of the football era of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell me when, what made you start doing music? What made you start doing music? Um, and that was your next step. Right. Uh, the your next, success. After right. the football. After the football. You know, the, people say, yo, you know, you got to have something to fall back on, but like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. All right. The, my my fall back on was the music shit. Mm. So when I got to New York, I already know this is the birthplace of music, rap, you know, rap, I should say. So yeah, always in my mind, yeah, ginger really too, right? I wanted to stay more connected to the music part of it because this is the part I left out too when I was down there. Shout out to... Open like a DJs in, in Florida. I was um, rolling with my cousin and them, and they really was the ones that really had me more on the music side of shit. It was okay. DJs, and used to be in the record pool. We just got to, you know, get a lot of records. Obviously, a lot of rap records from my peers was down there. You know. So, so wait, hold on, cause I'm showing my, I was um, pouring my drink. Right. So wait, so now you saying that you got cousins that open locker that and, and in open locker Florida that was influenced right. me with the music side of shit. Like I said, rap back then. We talking about, you talking about late. We talking about late seventies, you know, early eighties. It wasn't no rap, you know. Rap, you know. I was up here when Luke Skywalker came out. I was about to say, wasn't it down with that nah. go go or bass music down? Nah, Luke Skywalker. See, that's another thing. See, we kind of went to. All right, let's go back. Let's, 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 let's go in this section right here. In this section, like here, I said, I want to skip over right, right. In this section right here, okay, Miami. In this section right here, I want to make sure we get connected to that. In this section right here, right here this is another six degrees of separation. Um, the mobile DJs, we, we used to do shit called like mobile DJ shit. So, Open Like a DJ, it was called OL for short, was my cousin's um, mobile DJ set. So, I used to roll around with them everywhere we used to go, doing fucking, you know, playing music for high school uh, proms and, you know, whatever. Whatever it was, family reunions, whatever. So, at that time, that same time, there was a rival mobile DJ group. It used to be called Ghetto Style DJs. And Ghetto Style DJs was Luke Skywalker. So Luke Skywalker was you said, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. So you just said something too. A mobile DJ group? Get back to the Luke thing, but what is the mobile Mo okay. DJ group? Mobile meaning we would transport um you, you ever see when they can set up and they have the big ass woofers and the big speakers and the big cabinets and shit like that? Okay. Yeah. My cousins, we had an actual truck that we would pack all that shit up in, the console, everything, speakers, okay. tweeter boxes, and go drive to um say like storefronts and we'll have a permit and say you know to the store owner yo look we would like to play music at your store da 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 we have a permit to be out here for mm -hmm. such and such and such a time so such and such a time so say like right now summer day what well, ain't really summer now but in Florida it's fucking like summer yeah, we'll true. be in front of a fucking store setting up shit playing music and it'll draw a crowd to come to the store Okay. They be standing out in front of the store listening to the music and now more different. It, it, I ain't really never heard of And motherfuckers mobile, are now the the start DJ right. Niggas like will that. start trafficking the store more, going and buying chips and all type of shit and okay, shit okay. like that and standing out there listening to the music. So as long as ever that shit was happening, he didn't give a fuck whoever the owner was, he didn't give a fuck about his playing right, music. So, so you telling me Luke was a part of that? Luke was a part of mobile DJ set. So now when we would go into Luke's neighborhood and beat him, say we'll go and go into Liberty City or Overtown, that's in his area and get to a store that he maybe had a, a permit to do some shit to later, he'll show up while we there. And niggas is battling. Mm -hmm. Ghetto style DJs is on this side. Over lot of DJs is on this side. Oh, okay. So yeah. whoever got the loudest motherfucking set is going to fall, it's going to bang out. So if them mm -hmm. ghetto style DJ shit is louder, <laughs> it's going to matter. Your shit is a rap. You, nobody ain't even hearing your shit. They just made you shut your shit down. Okay, so that made you start to get into music, so right? That, so that was so when they was getting a lot of the record pool shit records, a lot of shit was coming from New York. Enjoy mm. label, um, damn, I can't remember. It's a, it, whatever the like labels was back then, Sugar Hill Gang, the, the Sugar Hill label, all that shit. Select, was getting a lot like of select. Of a lot of that shit was coming, you know, to, from from the record pool. So I would see a lot of that shit, listen to a lot of that shit, and get in tune with it. Be like, yo, so now. 
another time when I was down there, my mother actually sent me a record of what would be considered the first rap group with was um Sugar Hill Gang? No, King Ten the Third. King Ten the Third. With she bought me the record, and it was a forty five. I never forget the shit. She was like, "This is what's going on in New York, you know, rap," and it was uh King Ten the Third shit, and um. That was my first shit that I was really like listening to okay. on some rap shit in Florida. I've never heard of it. Never heard of him. So, boom. Now, that influence when I got here, you know, I wanted to find a way that I can be a part of the shit. Okay. Not part of hip hop. Part about. of hip hop. Be a part of the culture because this is this is New York. So it's like, yo, this is the birthplace. Though, what better place to try to be a part of the shit? Because mm. I don't think I would have been, ever, you know, booty music in Florida. That shit was that shit was the watch. But um, so <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, Decided, I said, you know, uh, trying to rap is one thing, but what if I try to learn how to make beats? Mm. Because at the same time, if I can make beats to give to niggas, that's also contributing too. Mm. Even though it's kind of behind the scenes, right. but I, you know, you'd be like, yo, son, I, I did that beat. And you're like, get the fuck out of here. Mm. And then now you go and look on the credit and you see R. Ellis. Mm. See on niggas, paperwork. See a paperwork. See that paperwork. You understand? So that's how it started. So now, um, went through a couple of jobs and shit. I landed this job at uh, ASCAP. Okay. And um, this is how I met my fucking partner. Rest in peace. Norm Glover, Witch Doctor, yeah, for life, Blues Brother. You're going to get to Norm in a um, I met him at ASCAP. And um, I was working in this shit called Office of Operations. And what that was is like a fancy word for fucking mailroom. <laughs> so I got to see niggas' actual checks coming through the mailroom, coming from actually ASCAP, because we had to seal them. But let the people know, ASCAP, and ASCAP is a Beat. place that when you sell your record, I mean, if you're, if you're an artist, this right. is how you get your money. Is that, 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 am I correct? Right. All right. ASCAP, BMI, CSEC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Publishing, they have them publishing, and, and, and writers, and all that. You have commercially packaged product, meaning things to sell. You want to register with one of those three. I don't know if it's another one or not, but at the time, we were working at ASCAP, and the mail used to come through, and the envelopes wasn't sealed. So I started looking at some of them shits, and one of them I looked at was Coogee Rap. And I saw royalty shit, and how much money. I was like, how much? How much was it? I, that shit was like eight G's. At that time. At that time, that was eight G's. That particular check, but niggas get checks every three months. Right. So that one, that one was eight G's, and I was like, "Hi, right. I look like some bread, and you know, whatever." I don't know at the time. I'm still not knowing what this is for, in right. the sense of not knowing now. You know, publishing writers. I didn't know none of this shit. Okay. So, but reason I'm working at ASCAP, I start learning shit from the inside. Mm. First, okay. So now I'm learning shit from the inside, I'm learning what writers is, learning because I started going to the workshop. ASCAP used to have workshops, so I used to go to the workshops and listen in on shit, you know, writers and 50% of this and 100% of that and shit like that. So I started learning shit on the inside. So as I worked there, um, Mr. C said he had a homeboy that worked there too, which happened to be Witch Doc. We worked, in two, we worked in two different departments. He worked in the index department, index department, and I worked in, you know, office and operations. So I went there, and um, I met up with him. Okay. And, you know, he was already on the track. You know, Witch Doc already had a group dominating three MCs. He was already producing. Mm -hmm. He was doing a lot of shit already. So this nigga used to have fucking tapes mm -hmm. on him. So he was like, yo, yeah, yeah, play these tapes. We used to go to lunch right across the, right across the street from... Um, one Lincoln Plaza, it was this shit called an atrium or some shit over there, and we used to go over there and have lunch. Mm. And a nigga used to bring tapes, I used to be listening to the shit, and then that's when I got the idea, like, yo, show me how to do this shit. I want to mm. learn how to produce. Like, the rapping part was one thing, but I want to learn how to produce. So, you know, that shit happened. We formed that connection, but at the same time, I was already working with Ezo. Mm. So now me and Ezo was working on the rapping part because Flatbush, he's Flatbush. So shout out to Big Ezo. Right now we still working to the day. So it's like you know, working billionaires <laughs> right now. So so shout out. So we started doing shit. Come on, dog skin Ezo. <laughs> so we started doing shit, um, working on actual demos and shit. But me and Norm started working on making beats. 
Okay. So I already had, you know, both sides kind of like working at the same time. But, you know, the rapping part, I didn't know nothing about no bars, none of that shit. I was just rapping. You know, so once I figured out, I said, you know what? If I learn how to do this shit and start contributing, this may be my way into the culture. Okay. okay. You know, I was already in sort of kind of like some fake break dancing and shit, you know. I used to do that shit, but not no, no I wasn't no the fucking... Break dancing I, I, I was more of a popper. I wasn't okay. more, I wasn't like no floor work nigga. I ain't have no leg moves. I wasn't crazy leg shots. Crazy crazy like this. Yeah, I was shit. more of the popper nigga, so um, I already had that shit. So I was like, yo, this is the next part of it. I want to learn how to make music. So, you know, I used to go over to Norm's crib. At the time, he was mad. Yeah, you see what it is. Uncle Ralph getting them treats, these mini treats on the late night. All right, you see how it's going down. Big up on my crew. All right, support black business. That's what we're supposed to do. All right. So kind of beat. He he had the uh, EPS plus sixteen, and um, you know we had a lot of stuff on that, a lot of stuff that he was just sitting on, bro. I was like, yo, bro, what are you doing? So as we, Mike. as we uh, the mic is not plugged in. Yeah, it won't. Is it plugged in? Well, I gotta start over, no? No, it's just. You know, as I'm watching him construct shit, you know, it's hard to keep shit quantized. Anybody that had those machines, you know. And them shits used to crash a lot, too. So we used to try to hurry up and try to work. And we used to work in pieces sometimes. We would get a drum pattern down. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, you try it. Now get the shit down and then we'll save the shit. Because them shits used to crash and they used to get hot. So we, we learned that shit real fast. And, um, that's one thing I, I one thing before you go any further one thing I, I used to like about you when you used to make beats is your drum pattern mm -hmm. your drum pattern was like like insane to me like the way you used to like it's crazy the, 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 the thing with that was I knew that that drives everything you can have an ill loop but the drums is trash and this shit don't come through the snare's not you know, snap, the kick don't punch. So, you know, with that, I, that was the first thing I prided in, was trying to make sure that I liked how the drum shit was flowing because that was gonna make the whole loop flow differently, whether it was two kicks here, one kick here, or one kick, double kick, one kick, all that shit matters. You know, a, a four bar pattern loop, or a two ball pattern, drum pattern. See, all, 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 and all that shit, guys. all that shit matters, especially you know, because sometimes, you know, you you could you could drum out, you could drum too much, and it'll take away from the loop. Like you got too many kicks and too many spaces, and it'll take it away. Sometimes it's just best to have a two bar loop, just repeating the same shit, because the loop. Sometimes I used to do two bar drum loop and a four bar loop, two oh. bars of drums and then a four bar loop. So a lot of shit you. is just, I'm not the loop is doing a lot of shit, yeah. but the drums are just staying in one place. I don't want to speed it, but I'm going, I know you want to get to it, but, but it's the same, that, 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 what is that pattern that you did on big shit? I know, I have that Those, shit. That, that was a, which one? The, I mean, the, which song? The, the one, damn. The, what, Everyday Struggle? Yeah. Every, see, okay, the funny shit is, the first two songs recorded with Big was two songs, two beats that I did for me to soften up how I was rapping. Like I said, you know, I want to rap to some smooth shit because everybody's, at that time, <laughs> niggas that was producing at that time in that, in that 90s section, everything was jazz. Think mm. about it. It was jazz loops. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm, jazz. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, for me, or, 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 or some chopped up, maybe. It wasn't really soul samples. It wasn't, um... Familiar loop shit like, like how we how, how it wasn't jazz. I mean, it, it was jazz in the horns. And right, right. Like so you think about Pete Rock, right? All that that that's that's jazz type of that's jazz loops and okay. jazz hits and jazz riffs. There was a lot of shit out of that being done. Tribe Called Quest, you know, all, 
a lot of people following that type of production style. So we did it too. But at that time, I was like, yo, we're gonna, I'm going to try something different. So then that's when I dipped into now looping up the barge. Mm. Shit like that. Nobody was fucking with shit like that okay. at that time. So now, <laughs> looped up the barge. Niggas was dip, dabbling. Tribe Called Quest had used the same, I think it was the same album we used for the original uh, uh, um, Me and My Bitch, which was Minnie Rippleton. And um, nobody wasn't fucking with shit like that. Like mm. So I caught that loop for the original Me and My Bitch. All right, hold on, hold on. Before you kind of see about to go dwell on that. Before you go dwelling into that part about how you did all that beat, mm -hmm. this talk about how you got to big. How you got to big, all right, my nigga. All right. how you you, you talking about no, but how you got to big. Right, let's back let's back up. Let's back up. Yeah. My first production credit, shout out to my dude, Sir Essence Don. Another Flatbush dude. Hold up. Happy birthday to Big IG. Happy birthday to the B I G, man. Shout out to B.I.G. 50th birthday. Shout out to B.I.G. The only Christopher we salute. The only Christopher we know. All Christopher right. Wallace. Love you, bro. Love you. Um, yeah, so my first artist was um, Sir Essence Dawn. Um, S got signed to... He was signed to Freeze Records before fucking Jay-Z. Mm. Freeze... I think he was their second artist that they signed. Freeze, Freeze Records was going, being distributed through Priority mm. at the time. So um, what happened was we had started working on some demos and shit. And shout out to my dude Frank Donalds. Um, he uh, was sort of kind of like trying to manage S, and he was you know managing, you know just doing a lot of stuff at that time. We decided to go to the Source magazine. And take what we did up there and try to get into the unsigned hype. It worked. We got into the unsigned hype. Met Maddie C. Okay. Here's where the story begins. Maddie C, a lot of we people can't. don't know the man behind the source, man. Shout out to Maddie C, unsigned man. Unsigned hype. Listen, after we get in the unsigned hype column, you know, me and Maddie and a lot of the people at the source, we got cool and shit. I used to just go up there, like, and just be chilling with Maddie, you know, playing them different shit, because Norm lived. In the same neighborhood as, as Matt, not too far from there. So, okay. you know, I would go leave with Matt from the source sometimes. So, go up there and play tapes with him. Matt ended up doing that with, with Norm. So, one of the fucking tapes I left up there. One of your beat tapes? Left it with Matt. All right. So, that happened to be the tape with the DeBarge loop and the Mini Ripperton loop, which later became One More Chance and Me and My Bitch. All right. Original version. Mm. So, um, one day I get a call from DJ Mr. C. Um, this is a part of the story that always gets fucking left out. And I get mad as fuck. Okay. Niggas me always want to take credit for shit. But this is the real story right here. Right talk here. It. Talk your talk, man. So, I get a call from Mr. C because he gets my number from Master Ace. He calls me in verbatim. He says, yo, how do I get into the unsigned hype? How do I get an artist into the unsigned hype? And I'm like, because you're the only person I know, actually know physically that was in unsigned hype. Okay. So how do I do that? And I, you know, I was like, yo, you know, my man, Maddie C, who's now me and him is like this. Um, I know him. So, you know, I can put the word in for the artist. Mm. Unbeknownst to me. It's fucking big. Mm. I don't know. I didn't know. I had no idea. I had no idea who the artist was. He said, yo, look, I got this artist. I'm going to try to get him an unsigned hype. Mm. didn't know it was big. So at the time, I just told Matt, you know, I know the dude that Mr. C is trying to get an unsigned hype. So he was like, yo, you know him? I said, yeah, I know him. I, you know what I'm saying? Mr. C, you know, we talked about this before. So I'm, I'm vouching for Mr. C because Mr. Mm. C don't know nobody at the fucking source. Okay. So I'm vouching for him and told, you know, Matty, yo, I know, I know Big, I know him, and I didn't even know who the artist was. I didn't even know his name, bro, I swear to God. So now, on the strength of that, he listens to it. Mm. He gave it an ear. He gave it an ear. He listens to it. Likes what he hears. Boom. Six degrees of separation. Puffy went to school with Matty at Howard. Oh, wow. I didn't know that part. I didn't know that. Separation. Go to school. You went to school with him. 
So now Puffy's making his way through doing what he's doing. You know, me and Matt don't get a lot of credit. You don't give me all the credit he deserves. Because me and Matt, we did a lot of lead work. I used to do a lot of shit with Matt. Go, he used to be at NYU when he was going to school. I used to go to we go to his class and shit and talk to students and do all type of shit. This is early, 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 he early, early, early shit. He, he don't get enough credit. credit. Matt is a real fucking love you, Matt. Yo, so um, you know that shit happened. So he does the move, skips, bong. Puts Biggie and Hunts on hype. So after the, the, the you know the, the buzz stars buzzing, he takes the next move. Him and Mr. C go and see Puffy. Okay. So that's how it happens. So now Puffy's interested. Jesse offers him some money, hold him down or whatever it was. So Maddie hits me up and says, "Yo, I gave I gave I gave the tape to your boy." Gave the tape to my boy. boy. Who, who's your boy? Who's my boy? Yeah, who's your boy? Big. I gave the tape to Big. He wanted two beats on the tape. I said, he wanted, he wanted two beats on the tape? He said, yeah, I gave him the tape. Mm. All the while, he's still thinking that I, I know him. Like I, I, I don't even know him. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's like, this shit was bugged out. So he gave him the tape, which, which later became One More Chance mm. and Me and My Bitch. So the whole while he still thinks I know big. And I ain't even meet him yet. Mm. So after he takes the shit, somehow, Big gets my fucking number. Big mm. calls me and says, yo, I want them two beats on the tape. Yo, I said, them shit ain't even finished. I don't care, I want them. Mm. I swear to God, yo, mm. I was on the floor. Mm. Okay. See, I, all right. Unbeknownst to me, not knowing what the fuck is gonna happen next. I'm mm. not knowing. So we gotta go. To the studio, you know, we go, we go on, it's a laying session. Everybody that's doing shit for big, we all come into the studio and we laying all the tracks behind each other. Like, we all had a time give slot. Us, give us that vision, like, what it was like, who, what, what young producers was getting that big today right now? Who uh, well, we were at this studio, I can't, I don't know the name of it right now, I forgot, it's somewhere like right off Broadway in the 20s. Mm. Um, we were there laying down shit in a small room. And in the next room over on the side was Mob Deep. Mm. And 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 fucking Habit came in and said what's up and shit like that. We spoke for a little while. Um, Buster Rhymes actually worked at that studio too, but he was working in a bigger room, but he wasn't another there that day. Another, flat another, flat another flat flat. bush. So uh he wasn't there at that time. But um um I wasn't really focus on too much of the other shit. I was just, you know, it could have been other motherfuckers that was there, yeah. but I was just focused on what we was, you know, right, cool, just cool, at that cool. moment. I ain't saying I was so groupy oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Definitely. Like Definitely. I was. But, yeah, the shit was like, yo, bro, like, the shit was amazing to me. Like, it goes from, you know, unsigned hype until now we working with this artist that niggas is, you know, he was working on the artist at the time. Yeah. Oh, we, just, we, don't know who, who, we don't know who it really artist, is. Right. We don't even know what's really going on, but I'm just, you know, yeah. Fuck we me. are Flatbush. Shout the Sticky Fingers. Straight, original Flatbush bad boy. You're dealing with you, dear man. East St. Teeth, Cotillia Road. You already know, album all. You know what we do, Howard.